Friday night action on ESPN. Welcome to Kent, Ohio, where the Kent State Golden Flashes host the Buffalo Bulls. A look at the max standings. Three Ohio schools at the top. Kent State and Akron, both six and one. Buffalo, they're in the middle of that log jam. A four-way tie for fourth place. Welcome inside the Max Center alongside former Princeton Tiger, Noah Savage. I'm James Westling. Kent State, they were riding a 10-game winning streak, the third longest streak in the country until Tuesday. They lost at Northern Illinois. How do they get back on track? Well, they got to show up on the defensive end. They really didn't get off the bus in that game. They played with basically no energy and no effort. They're an elite defensive team, and they're going to need to show up on that end against a Buffalo team that loves to get out and run. They're number two in the country in fast break points. Kent State, they're led by guard Sincere Carey, the reigning MAC player of the year. Yeah, he's great. He's already scored 1,600 points in college. He's been in college a long time. He can score the basketball. He's great vision, 4.9 assists a game. He does everything for them, and I think he's the best player in the league, and it's kind of not even close. He's at another level in the MAC. And then Buffalo probably had their best win of the Jim Whitesell era, last game out against Ball State. Oh, baby, how about the crossover? Curtis Jones putting guys on skates. He was fantastic in that game, 27 points. And he's really improved his outside shooting, 38% this year. But this was the play of the night. Up top, one-handed throwdown. Zid out. Buffalo's coached by Jim Whitesell in his fourth season. He was the associate head coach under Nate Oates from 2015 to 2019. Whitesell is three and three against this Kent State team. For the Golden Flashes, Rob Sinderoff in his 12th year at the helm. The 2022 Coach of the Year in the MAC. The Golden Flashes went 16 and four in the regular season in league a season ago, and they're off to a six and one start this year in this conference. Our officials are Edwin Young, Alfred Smith, and King Whetstone. And Noah, opposing styles. Buffalo second in the max in scoring offense. Meanwhile, Kent State second in the league in scoring defense. Yeah, and Buffalo isn't even the fastest team in the league in terms of tempo. That's Toledo. But they love to get up and down. And for Buffalo coming in here to Kent State, they've got to manage their emotions. This place is rocking. They got the lights off. They had the glow sticks going. This is a hard place to win. Kent State dressed in the home gold. Buffalo in the black and blue. Thomas tries a three. It's in and out. He's one of the top shooters in this conference. Myron Thomas has 48 threes on the season. Starting lineup for Buffalo. Isaac Jack starting his 10th game in a row. The freshman from British Columbia. Now watching the half court. Buffalo loves to drive it. And Kent State was working on clogging up those claps against drives, but that was a good pass inside, and that's one that he's got to catch. Starters for the Golden Flashes. Usual cast of characters, except Chris Payton will make his first start of the season here tonight. He's been playing good basketball. 13 points Ooh. per game in his last two. And a foul underneath. Yeah, Curtis Jones went down hard. And the crowd doesn't like it here, but let's take a look. Yeah, to me, that's a block. He wasn't in a legal guarding position. He slid in a little bit late. I think the officials miss that one. First on Malik Jacobs. A block on the inside. A pile of bodies in Kent State pulls it out of the pack. I'm talking to Coach Senderoff. They're not afraid to run with the Bulls. They're going to go out and just take what's there on the offensive end. Miss from Sincere Carey. Relocates, fires, and hits. Now, he had a game last year where he hit 10 three-point shots, 42 points in that game. He's got the program record. You got to watch number three in goal. Downhill, and another denial. Stays on this end with Buffalo. The Kent State's game plan is all about playing incredibly physical right to the point where you feel like you're getting fouled the whole possession they're gonna bump you the whole night and a great block by sincere carry mr do everything for the golden flashes 
Clashes on the move, and it's poked out of bounds. It'll uh, stay with Kent State on this end. With standing next to Sincere Carey today at shoot-around, he, he's pure muscle. I mean, the guy's like a rock, and for a guard, one of the best things he does is play physical. He is just a solid, on-balance player. Santiago drills a three. Kent State with two early triples. They lead six to nothing. Love his game, Gio Santiago. He spent some time with the Puerto Rican national team. He can really stroke the basketball. Buffalo scoreless in the first two minutes. They get it in the corner. Powell, Jack, tip, and it's secured by Kent State. What do you like about Kent State's defense in the first two and change? Carey pulls up for a three, and that one's partially blocked, and Buffalo's on the move. Push pass. Powell, unable to finish. Well, they're active. Look how active they are inside. They love it here, because everybody's getting involved with high-energy plays. Driving kick, Santiago. Great outlet. Jones crossing over. He's Mr. Do-It-All for Buffalo. Open look for Adams. He can't hit Buffalo's ice cold to start. They've missed their first six shots. But that, they'll, they'll take that from the Buffalo standpoint. It was a great outlet pass. Ball touched both sides of the court and got a wide open three. Malik Jacobs in and out. He's one of the top defenders in the nation. Second in the country in steals. He can also shoot it. And Buffalo struggling with their turnovers out of the gate. They can really turn it over. When they're bad, they're bad. When they protect the basketball, they can be great. But the spread between bad and good for Buffalo is too wide right now, and that's their biggest weakness, turning it over on the break. They turn it over almost 15 times per night. Santiago puts it on the floor. Pitches it in the corner. And a whistle and an offensive foul on Giovanni Santiago. He's a snap passer for the Flashes. Yeah, no argument from Giovanni Santiago. He went down the lane. He knew he had a jump stop. He went right through Curtis Jones, who's already taken two charges. And a great play to slide in and take that charge. Jones leads this Buffalo team with 11 charges now on the season. Does it on both ends. He's their leading scorer as well. Out high a foul as Foster's trying to turn the corner. That's going to be on Ron Hornbeek, his first and already the third foul on Kent State. He just has to get their step early. How does Buffalo get something going offensively? Still scoreless. Well, you got to be not results oriented and focus on getting good shots. And the open three they got off the great fast break, they'll take that all night. Uh, they're, they're not concerned with necessarily anything other than getting a good shot every possession. Powell dashing baseline. And Jones on the catch was out of bounds. Already the third blunder by the Bulls. And it's just about being fundamental, disciplined, and not running out of real estate down there on the baseline. But the passing already by both teams has been great. So then you, you've got to be able to read defenses and locate guys, but that's just an unforced error stepping on the baseline. Jacobs powers into the lane. Santiago for a three, and he's fouled on the closeout. And this will put one of the nation's best free throw shooters at the line to shoot three. And Buffalo's defense early has been really reactive. They are, they're collapsing deep on drives and the passes, at least from our vantage point, are obvious. It's same side corner, snap a chest pass or to the wing. And you certainly cannot help off of Gio Santiago. He is too good, 39% from downtown. Yeah, that, that was a mistake defensively. Free throw is true. Santiago has only missed nine free throws for his entire Kent State career. He's fantastic. And he, I was watching him today in shoot around. He's almost like Curry. He shot his normal shots, then he shot a shot that up to the rafters, like 60 feet in the air, and he swished it. He, he has all the trick shots, 
He's not a guy you want to play in, in horse for any kind of money. <laughs> Mr. Perfect at the line. Kent State coach Rob Sidoroff told us at shoot around that Santiago really compliments his teammates well. He's very unselfish, a glue guy. Yeah, no doubt, and he can be great without being ball dominant, which lets Sincere Carey run the show. And how about this start for Kent State? Nine to nothing. A lot of game left, and Buffalo's coming off their best performance of the season. They just got to find some of that magic they had against Ball State. Hartnett over the top. Blocked. Tapped out. Kent State with it. And that, that was a great pass, but Koran Hornbeek just had an even better rejection inside. Hornbeek leads the Golden Flashes with now 17 blocks. Already three for Kent State. And a foul on Armani Foster. Will send us to a break. It's all Kent State at the first media timeout. Box is the reigning player of the year in the MAC, but he also made the all defensive team. He does it on both ends of the floor. Yeah, he's impacted the game in a number of ways already. Slides down to the corner, count that. Then he comes off assist on the out of bounds play. And then even for a guard, bang, swats it out of bounds. Looking like Shaquille O'Neal down low, but he's done it in so many ways his whole career. He had eight steals against Houston earlier this year. We talked about a game with 10 three-pointers. He's a quiet assassin. He's 30 and six in his last 36 college basketball games. He's just a winner. He's a quiet assassin. He's also just quiet by nature. He's not a real rah-rah guy. He's very soft-spoken. He's the quiet leader on this team. And he has it out high between the circles. Deflection. Oh. Tipped right back to Jacobs. Hornbeek wants to get in on the fun. But it was it was such a good deflection by Isaiah Adams. And then Laquille Hardnett made a bad decision and tried to tip that ball one-handed on the fast break out. Like, we're not playing spike ball. Like this is a D1 game, and that's one he wants back. Well, you gotta hold the ball and then throw the outlet. I know they want to get out on the break, but they let one go there with this, this poor outlet pass. And that was a great pass inside. Foster down oh. the double-fisted dunk from Joe Nivea Smith. And one. And Buffalo finally, five minutes in, they're on the board. Oh. How about that? To, to start, to start, get yourself off the snide. Slide along the baseline. That's why they call it the dunker spot down low. Genavia Smith. Big time down low. Transfer from Seton Hall. Played 11 games for the Pirates a season ago. Man, we got to shout out our crew for miking up that rim. That, that sounded awesome. <laughs> Buffalo's in the book. Now, even though Coach Senderoff told us he's not trying to slow down the tempo, that's not what it looks like to me. They're taking time off the shot clock. Corner three slides across the rim from Davis. Buffalo, they will sprint off of rebounds. Hartnett gets split up and he turns it over. The fourth already on the Bulls. Yeah, a little, little too much by the Cincinnati transfer. Averages nine points per game, but you know, Buffalo is just finding every way possible to turn it over. It's it's good defense by Kent State, but there's unforced ones as well. Are they just pressing too much too early? Yeah, I think they're a little excited. You know, this, this is a great atmosphere, and they really want to play well here. And, you know, when you press, it causes you to make mistakes. Jacobs, Kent State has certainly settled in. There's a blunder by the Flashes. They're third. Buffalo looking to push. Hartnett, half hook. One of the foul didn't get the whistle, and Hornbeat clears for Kent State. Yeah, and a pretty good look. They got it all the way deep to the third hash. Carey, he is surgical. Long rebound. Up top, Sollinger for a three. Money. How about 48% for three on the year? 
Adams headed to the line on the other end. Jalen Sullinger, the sophomore from nearby Columbus, Ohio, as you noted, the best pure shooter on this team. Yeah, right there, you, you just can't leave him open. He's a guy who came to college incredibly talented, but his coach wanted to see him play harder. And when you go against Malik Jacobs, Sierra Carey, and Gio Santiago, you know, you learn what it means to be a D1 college basketball player. And he has stepped his game up big time here in his sophomore season. Adams able to convert on the first free throw. Ten point lead for Kent State. Six and change gone by in this first session. Buffalo has started one for nine from the field. Kent State's already canned three threes. And yeah, for Buffalo, they got to do it here on the defensive end. Because even though they've been horrific on the offensive end, they're still in this game. Santiago from the coffin corner. Rebound. Tie up in the arrow favors Buffalo. Kent State is continuously getting open shots in their half court offense. And you know, Gio Santiago doesn't miss that shot very often. They're doing a great job executing and screening for each other. Kent State's already hoisted nine threes. Top two teams in the back and turnovers forced per game. And with that one there, he's turned it over five times. Kent State, not a whole lot better. They turned it over four times. You know, I'm thinking back as a player a couple times when you're when you're a little bit injured, you end up playing a little bit better because I think it distracts you. I think both sides are so keyed up for this game that they're making mistakes they don't usually make. Yeah, they're hyped. Corner three from Jacob Snow. The crowd is rowdy. It's been back and forth. 14 to 5. Kent State has a nine-point cushion. Jones. Jacobs. Struggling with it, and it's off his knee out of bounds. Stays with Buffalo on this end. That's a good play to fly in there by Isaiah Adams. Keep this possession alive for Buffalo. But how, how fun is this atmosphere? There, there's a DJ on one end, there's a full band on the other, and it's pajama night. The students are in pajamas. You can have a cold bevy. Why not? Late what night a, tip for the students. Yeah, what a great time to be at. Kent State University. You had me at pajamas. I don't, I don't want to know what you sleep in, partner. Elbow pull up. Adams trying to track down his own miss. Here comes Sincere Carey. Peels it back. Thomas the blow by. Oh, and it's denied at the rim. Smith with the rejection. Hartnett trying to push. Oh. He has it swatted out of bounds. Oh. Blocks and turnovers to be here in Kent, Ohio. Whoa, nothing guaranteed here, man. Right here, you think you've got a layup, and that is erased inside by Genevia Smith. And then down the other end, Chris Payton getting his first start of his career. Massive rejection. Adams three, he cans it. Up 36% from downtown. Good looking lefty stroke. Answer off the mark from Carey. And a whistle of the walk. Good drill. Walker getting some early action for Buffalo. Sixth turnover on the Bulls. Oh man, you think you got a layup. Not against Kent State. Chris Payton with the huge rejection for Kent State. Welcome back to Kent, Ohio. Kent State with a six point lead in our second media timeout. Yep. So they got a technical foul. Look, we're using sign language with the refs because we're up a little higher. After the block, he comes right up. Janivia Smith, and he has a lot to say. 
and they teed him up. They got him right there talking to Myron Thomas. Too much jawing. He was jawing after the block, and then he kept talking, going to the timeout. The rest were all over it and, and called that tech. I mean, there is so much, not only junk talking, which I'm pro talking a little bit on the court. There's so much of the you're too small on his head. Let me flex my chest. It's like enough, guys. The Instagram is slowly ruining this game with all the nonsense that's going on. <laughs> I can tell you from right up here, a lot of the guys talking aren't that good. So they need to talk less and play more. Well, coach of the Bulls, Jim Whitesell, told us that he has an emotional team. Yeah, and like have fun, enjoy the game, talk a little bit if you want to, but there's too much demonstrating after every single play. Santiago misses just his second free throw of the entire season. Yeah, right there you see a lot of talk back and forth. So good job by the officials. Catch it now. You don't want any ugliness. You don't want it to escalate. But Coach Whitesell definitely not happy. And he, he's confused where it happened. He didn't see it happen. So he goes and talks and goes right to him and says, that's that's what they want. Kent State is going to play you physical and just bump you all game long. And they want that reaction out of you. That's what he's saying from his point of view. But from both sides, you can't react when someone's trying to get a rise out of you. Malik Jacobs on the handle for Kent State. A deflection that stays on this end. A great reaction by Zid Powell to go down the baseline and knock that out of bounds. But, you know, when, with the physicality of Kent State, it's like body blows on a boxer. You, you might not feel it early, but after they, they bump you, they stuff the cuts, it wears you down. And it's, it's that, along with their attention to detail on the scouting report, that makes them so elite defensively. They are, they are mentally incredibly tough and physically tough. Foul on Buffalo will put Kent State back at the line. Where they are four for five. We have a top 20 women's basketball matchup for you Sunday afternoon on ESPN. As Olivia Miles in seventh ranked Notre Dame take on Diamond Johnson in 20th ranked NC State. Coverage from Reynolds Coliseum begins at 3 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Notre Dame took down Florida State 70 to 47 last night. They're 17 and 2. NC State 15 and 5. Diamond Johnson averaging almost 13 per night. Vaughn Cameron Davis. Two for two at the line. Buffalo struggling to score. They average over 80 points per game. Jones stuffed by Jacobs. It's already the fifth block for the Golden Flashes. Court pass, Payton. And he'll head to the line to shoot a pair. Yeah, that was a sensational one-handed pass by Gio Santiago on the baseline. But right here, you see how tough the Kent State defense is. Go right down the lane. You're blocked from behind, and it's probably a charge on the front side. I mean, it, it was good defense in two ways by Kent State. Blitz the first one. Malik Jacobs, that was his 14th block of the season. We noted earlier that he's second in the country in steals per game at 2.9 per outing. Yeah, and he's got the program's only triple-double ever. Last year against Paul State, he's incredibly versatile. And he's the emotional and vocal leader of the team, according to Coach Senderoff. He's really the guy talking the most in practice, and... He's a good personality compliment to Sincere Carey. That yeah, coach said he's the alpha. Buffalo second to the nation coming in. And fast break points per game tonight. No, they have none. Another steal. Jacobs again. And a foul. Heady play by Davis to slam on the brakes. And I believe Isaac Jack will be called for the personal. I mean, it's just great reaction. Being all over the set, Buffalo was running and jumped right into the passing lane. He got out on the break. And then Isaac Jack had nowhere to go. The big guy just couldn't stop. 
They call that one on the floor. Santiago hurls down the lane. Jacobs thought about it. Tim to shoot. Jacobs against Adams. Extra pass. Davis tees. Way off. Hornbeak. And Isaac Jack is there to claim it. Pulls it away. And then bothers the shot to redeem himself. How does Buffalo get out and run? They have no fast break points. Well, there it is. Before I can answer you, they got a shot up. Long passes, good outlets. But it starts with getting stops in the defensive end. Jones has started cold. Corner three, no. Hornbeek with the rebound. Davis pirouetting. He has it swatted away. Second Buffalo block. Yeah, Isaiah Adams again. With a great defensive play. It has been tough sledding around the rim. Three, no from Adams. Flashes have numbers. Assist from Jacobs. Timeout, Buffalo. A great shot by Myron Thomas to fill the lane at 6 8. He got up, filled the lane, throw it down on the break. Kent State rolling here at home. ESPN and the ESPN app. Yeah, uh, Alabama 18 and 2. One of those teams. If you haven't seen Brandon Miller play yet, he's about a, he's like a 6 9 Allen Houston. Him, Javon Quinterly, a Jersey guy. There seems to be a, a Jersey guy on every team that I like. And then keep an eye on that West Virginia game. They're 12 and 8, but they have the fourth best strength of schedule in the country. And it doesn't get any easier after that game. They have TCU and Texas after that. Pull up from Kerry Buckets. And Alabama coach Nate Oates really put his name on the map at Buffalo. Yeah, no doubt. And you know, they, they dominated Kentucky, talking about Alabama, 78-52. to 52, And they held Oscar Sheway at only four points. So that, that was probably one of the most impressive wins by any team this season, in my opinion. Buffalo's hit back-to-back -back threes. That one from Zid Powell. Just his 11th three of the year. That's not his wheelhouse. 20% coming in from deep. And they needed that, too. But they, they were hanging really tough, given how well Kent State has played. Carry. That's an air bank. Follow, no from Thomas. Collects his own miss and finishes. And you see the coaching staff for Buffalo, they're signaling, like, get it going, keep the tempo up. They want to keep flying even off after a make and fly it up. Adams, three in a row for the Bulls. Isaiah Adams heating up here in the first half. He's been good. I mean, his, his defensive energy really has been a catalyst for the Bulls, and now knocking down shots as well. And before you blink, what well, looked like a blowout, it's a six-point game. Buffalo, four for 11 from deep. They're one from nine from inside the arc. Santiago's three barely clips the rim. Remember, Kent State led 11 to nothing. Buffalo outscoring them 17 to six since Adams doesn't have the hot hand on that one. Oh! And a jump ball. Wow. Isaac Jack. Oh, man, Isaac Jack got tossed, but not before. Buffalo getting a piece of the paint, swinging outside. Zid Powell. And then Isaiah Adams getting in on the act. Buffalo trying to come back. Lena Noah, it's tough to win here. Kent State, they own the nation's second longest home winning streak. They've won 16 in a row here at the MAC. Yeah, and some celebs in the crowd, like the, the sloth there, you know? That looked like me on defense when I was playing. And, you know, they packed it out here. They're doing a great job. Uh, there was a wrestling match at seven on campus. So some of the students probably did double duty. And you got to give them a lot of credit for supporting their student athletes and making it really tough to win here. Nice long and the finish from Peyton, the assist carry. Yeah, Chris, Chris Payton can really fly, and he's, he's really making the most of his first career start here tonight. Inside, Smith, miss, collected by Davis. Buffalo struggling around the rim. 
And just one for ten from two-point range. And Peyton able to finish. And a whistle. You know, for, for great players, as we, we just see officials checking if, if Armani Foster's okay, and I think he is, but the game slows down for great players. And you see that with Sincere Carey. That would right here just gets drilled by the pick a little bit and he did a good job make sure he's okay but the sincere carry the game is slow that that, that assist is in slow motion for him can't state steal carry crossover turn around and he makes it look so easy yeah he gets a quarter step and too strong to get back in front of him and then once he gets it within 15, he can hit the turnaround as well. Biggest lead of the night for the Golden Flashes. Foster. <laughs> Offensive rebound. Jones from the corner. He is ice cold. Jones has started 0 for 4, the leading scorer on the season at almost 16 per night for Buffalo. Threading the needle. And the finish from Davis. Sweet pass from Jacobs. Buffalo needs a timeout to stop the bleeding. Why he's probably the top dog in the conference. Turn around. Swish. And then look at this pass. Right off the dribble. Doesn't put his second hand on it. Malik Jacobs, who's a fantastic playmaker. Thread in the needle. Looked like Magic Johnson on that pass. This Kent State team, they share it well. They don't turn it over. This is a team that's built on discipline and fundamentals. Oh, yeah. But they've got a little flash to him as well. Oh, no doubt. He's named the male athlete of the year. And look at that fit. That drip is on point. Looking like, who did I say looked like pregame? Lenny Kravitz. Little Lenny Kravitz look. I like that look. <laughs> fly away. Powell. That's a brick. Two flashes battling for the rebound. Kent State has scored on seven straight possessions. Drive and kick. Davis ends the streak. Down the middle. Oh, yeah. He has it. Pinned against the glass and out of bounds. Six. Count them. Six blocks for Kent State in the first half. Chris Payton again. Well, we got to check there's not a trampoline down there. He is flying off the ground and almost pins that thing on the backboard. What a great block inside by Chris Payton, the senior who transferred here from Pitt. His coach told us that he is just oozing with confidence right now. Commits a foul out front. That's the first foul issued to Chris Payton and the 17th foul. And so Buffalo will try to make up some ground at the line. Kent State holding their largest lead of the half. Jones has his first point of the night. How important will it be to get him going? He's their leading scorer. Yeah, I mean, he, he needs to get going. He's got 53 threes on the season, which is fourth in the MAC. He's hit five threes three times this year. Like, he's a big time scorer and a big time shooter. So they got to get him some open looks. And then he'll take care of the rest. Usually gives you around 15 points a game. At 27 on Tuesday at Ball State. Buffalo's most complete performance of the season, a 91 to 65 win. Jones pestering Sillinger. Tough, too. That's a long one. Wide off the glass. And Kittrell Blocker was undercut. And the foul's going to be called on Kent State. It's on Davis. That's the second on Von Cameron Davis, who comes off the bench but plays the fifth most minutes on this Kent State team. So the rest of the, rest of the half, 440 left to go. Playing the foul game is going to be really important for both teams, but probably more important for Buffalo. If you got a 50-50 where you could shoot it or drive it, put it on the deck, 
to try to get one of those hand check calls to create a scoring opportunity because not only that will that put points on the board but it slows down Kent State's momentum here in the first half and it really takes the crowd out of it Buffalo perfect from the line six for six in this first half they're just 19 percent from the field they've only made one two-point basket four of their five makes have been from beyond the arc Locker able to convert both. Hey. Downhill, Jacobs able to feather it in. Wanted the whistle, didn't get the call, able to score it anyway. Yeah, he's good enough to jump in for the contact and still hang in the air and finish. Well, that was just a straight line drive from the top of the key with very little help from Buffalo. Romani Foster's been quiet as well in this first session. Down low, Hartnett. Up and under. Tipped around. Hartnett. Trying to get off the floor. And he scores. Absorbing contact in traffic. That was a great play by LaCool Hartnett, who the first one, he didn't need the dribble. He put the, he put the ball on the deck, and he invited the help to come back, but he stuck with it. And I thought he got hit as well. Next dead ball will send this to our final media timeout of this first half. Jacobs a long way from the cup with 10 to shoot. Third charge taken by Curtis Jones in the first half. I thought it was a great play. Slid in, got position, and took the charge. He's playing great on the defensive end. Watch here. As Malik Jacobs refuses the screen, Curtis Jones slides in, takes the charge on the ball. When you get deep, once you realize a guy like Chris Payton is lurking in the deep water like Jaws to, <laughs> to emerge and erase your shot, you just got to come to a two-footed jump stop and spray the ball out for three-point shots. But he's coming from outside of his range to block these shots. So you've got to credit him with his ability to cover a lot of ground and get off the floor in a hurry. He's been spectacular, but now you've seen it if you're Buffalo. So make the adjustment, kick the ball out for open shots. Buffalo just one and eight this season when they're down at halftime. If you're Buffalo, what's the magic number? You're trying to get it to six, maybe four? I think 10 or under, you're probably pretty happy given the way that Buffalo shot the ball to start the game. Adams, nice runner. Isaiah Adams is having a nice half. He's up to eight points, make it 10 now for Buffalo to lead them in scoring. A really tough angle right there on the floater along the baseline. It's back to single digits with three minutes left before the break. Perry weaving and probing and spinning and passing. Payton, and one! A sincere carry looked like Chris Paul on that play. A little spinorama, Barishnikov, and then several pivot feet used by Chris Payton Jr. on that play. I thought that was very advanced footwork down low, but the strength up top to finish. How about Payton's line tonight? Seven points, three for three from the field, three rebounds, four blocks, and he gets the friendly bounce on the free throw. He's going, hey, coach. Uh, <laughs> Play me more. Put me in the starting lineup again. <laughs> Pocket pass. Hartnett. Oh, Double another punch. one. Another one. That would have been his fifth block. Hartnett going to the line to shoot two. You know, that's it. That's, that's the other thing you can do against a great shot blocker is it's an automatic pump fake. Get it in there. Pump once. Pump twice. Guys are jumping out of their shoes and get to the free throw line. Free throw is good. The first ever NBA Rivals Week is capped off by a triple header tomorrow on ABC. We'll have the Nuggets and the Sixers at 3 p.m. Eastern, followed by the Knicks and the Nets at 5.30. And then the Lakers and the Celtics round out the day at 8.30. It all starts with NBA Countdown, presented by Papa John's at 2.30 Eastern. Kent State has led wire to wire in this first stanza. Right. 
Carey demanding a screen. Shot clock into single digits. Backdoor feed and the rip is through for Von Cameron Davis. Let's hear Carey used a ton of dribbles on that possession, and then Buffalo just caught, caught ball watching. Back to a double digit lead. Jones, tough pull up from the top, can't hit the dot. Long rebound. Santiago wants to push to carry. Carry into the lane. Payton, he's feeling it, nowhere to go. Jones, another offensive foul. That is the fourth charge drawn by Curtis Jones. And I think what we're seeing is great attention to detail and scouting report. And Sincere Carey doesn't like it, but right there, he was sitting on this drive to the baseline. And I do think Carey went right through him. And remember, you can be moving. You're allowed to be moving as long as you're in legal guarding position. And when the offensive player goes right through the chest and the, and the defensive player is in legal guarding, that's a charge every time. Foster curls, driving kick, wipe off the three. That's an offensive foul on Buffalo. Buffalo, they call them the blue collar U. They track charges and deflections and loose balls and all that. Yeah, and they, they give it out an award for Mr. Blue Collar and even a hard hat as well. And, you know, that's that's been their, their two kind of signatures have been pushing the ball and then forcing a lot of turnovers. But the, the elite defensive team, remember, is Kent State. And, and they've shown that in a number of ways, not only forcing turnovers, but with the block shots. Loaded question, but the tempo favors Kent State. Oh, no doubt. Jacobs, he's fouled, headed to the line to shoot two. I mean, this is a low-scoring affair for Buffalo. Yeah, and it's it's not only the tempo, right? It's, it's missed shots. They really have not shot the ball well in the first half, but for the most part, their defense has kept them in this basketball game, with the exception of a play like that where Malik Jacobs just takes the baseline. He just, one dribble, gets all the way to the bucket, and gets fouled. 70% foul shooter. Kent State ranked 54th in the net rankings. Could be a Cinderella candidate come March if they get in. They have losses to Charleston, number two Houston, number nine Gonzaga at the time. By an average of 4.3 points per game. But then they've got that black eye, Northern Illinois. Yeah, and you know, Coach Senderoff was saying it's, it's a little too early to be talking about at large bid or seating. There's there's too many tough games to get through in the MAC. But you you look at that loss and the bad losses hurt you, especially from this level. They hurt you more than a good win helps you when it comes down to getting into the into the tournament. Double clutch in the basket for Hartnett underneath. And Joe Lenardi said that if Kent State doesn't win their conference tournament, he would have them as one of the first four out as an at-large bid as we sit here tonight, late January. 11-point lead for Kent State with under a minute left in this first half. Here's Kent State's resume. 54th in net, 73 in BPI. But how do you look past that record? 16 and 4. Well, ha. You look past it with teams like West Virginia, right? They're 12 and 8, but they're fourth in terms of toughest schedule in the country. And they just have more opportunities to get quality wins down the stretch. We already talked about their schedule. Just as one example, TCU, Texas, Oklahoma coming up. Even look at your boys, Kansas State. Your, uh, your alma mater there. They're playing Florida coming up. And even Florida's 12 and 8, but they just beat Missouri. Coming off a great win, they're number 20 in the country. And that's why February and into early March favor, favors those BCS schools. They just have more shots at quality wins that are going to help boost their resume. How many losses do you think Kent State can have, not win their conference tournament, and get in? If they ran the table and then lost in the championship, they could maybe be an at-large. But there's just too many, too many other factors to, to answer that question right now. Sure. Down to 10 to shoot, 40 on the game. Jacobs baseline. Payton with five on the timer, bumping with Hartnett. 
Up and under, can't score. Collects his own miss and powers it down. A great, powerful move. He's got such ni nice bounce inside. He just got right to that jump hook. Came into this one averaging 3.2 points and 3.4 rebounds per game. He's got 10 and 4 and 4 blocks. Final possession of this first half. Corner three. Tippin is good at the horn from Cottrell Walker. A big basket for Buffalo to get it down to 11 at intermission. Yeah, ending out on a high note and Buffalo hanging in, but Chris Payton making the best of his first start ever. 10 points, three rebounds, and four monster blocks. Kent State controlling things here at their home. Your subjects for 94 feet usually. <laughs> the Reese thought he was going to walk the plank there for a second. Right, one other thing Reese said. All right, so Kansas has lost three in a row. He said they've never lost four in a row under self. Honestly, they could have lost their last five if you go back and look at the recent stretch for KU. On the other side, Kentucky coming off a win over Texas A&M, but you're concerned about their defense. Well, yeah, and, and in line with what you just said, when you look at the Big 12 and the SEC, you could say that about a lot of teams right now. These games are so close. But Kentucky right now, defensively, they've, they've got to be consistent in this game. The one weakness that they have, there, there's a few, but the one that they have is when it comes to Jacob Toppin and Oscar Shiwe guarding the dribble. And you see right there with Jacob Toppin guarding in the post. Sabir Wheeler gets caught in the, in the lane in a transition situation because the big guys don't get back. There's another situation where the pick and roll exposes them. Shiwe opens up. They're giving way too much ground up defensively, especially at the 4-5 position. No question. And Kentucky's defense is struggling. And Dewan Harris for Kansas struggling as of late. Well, he's got to pick it up, and he's fully capable. We are in here a couple of weeks ago, and he's 10 of 14 from the three-point line, Zubin. I mean, this guy is a fantastic guard. And what's happening is you've got more teams that are playing him to score because they know he's such a good passer. And a few weeks back, he was so aggressive with his scoring. He was getting to the rim. He's got to put the ball on the floor, get to the basket, be aggressive, and let it rip. Let it rip. Reese mentioned the two games that are highlighting the SEC Big 12 Challenge. Here's some of the others to keep in mind, including Red Hot Iowa State. Paying a visit to Coach Gates. Second half's on the way. Coming up next on ESPNU, you won't want to miss this. The Geico High School Basketball Showcase presented by Axe. King James' son, Bronny James, and Sierra Canyon take on Notre Dame from Holly Pavilion. Our score here, Kent State leads Buffalo 42-31. The second half is coming up next. Eleven point lead for Kent State at intermission alongside Noah Savage. I'm James Westlane. It's been a one-two punch for Kent State in this first half, and it starts at the one with Sincere Carey. And a, a young fella enjoying the Sincere Carey show here. Got off started strong by sliding down to the corner, knocking down a shot, an assist on an out-of-bounds play. And then great defense. He started it off that big time block. But here's where he's at his best, kind of snaking the ball screen. He tried you two, three times. He's got the great vision in the half court. And then right there, a little turnaround jump shot off of the drive. But it was really a spectacular half on the defensive end by Kent State, led by Chris Payton Jr. The big time block. Active on the offensive end, able to throw it down off a little pick and roll action. And another huge block just erasing fast break single-handedly. Here's a look at the first half numbers. The cold shooting from Buffalo, what do the Bulls need to do offensively to get that percentage at a respectable mark? You know, early on, it, it wasn't bad shots. It, it was just missing wide open ones. So that percentage might stay low because they started so, so ice cold, but they got to get out on the break and they got to take their defense up another level to get turnovers to get out on the break. Buffalo has it to start this second half. Jones held to just two points in the first half of action. 
A missed three from the corner. It's off the mark from Zid Powell. Kent State 13 and 1 this season when they lead at the break. And they're happy to pull it out, set it up. And Malik Jacobs has been getting wherever he wants on the court. Peyton down low. Pulls into his defender and a blocking oh. foul called. He's in the halo underneath. Chris Payton in the first 17 games this season for Kent State had none in double figures. He's been in double figures now in three straight. So right here, no help comes. And he he's outside of the restricted, which he's allowed to be in it as the primary defender. But that's one where if it's not a charge, it should be a flop. In my the finish from Payton. Carry to Payton for the slam. Brings this raucous crowd to their feet here in Kent, Ohio. Why is Adams giving this up when he's got Gio Santiago? Oh! Peyton commits the foul. And he gets teed up. He spiked the ball, didn't like the call, thought he had his fifth block of the game. Instead, it's a technical and a chance for Buffalo to make up some ground. So I, Isaiah Adams had the ball originally. He gave it up. He got it back and took that baseline. Yeah, and anytime you slam the basketball and it and it goes up in the air, you can slam it and catch it and get away with it, but sure. that's an automatic tee. But I thought that block might have been good. I mean, he came in with the two hands. That's a play when you watch the NBA that doesn't get called a foul as often. And, and he's an NBA type of athlete, and they may have missed that one. Instead, it's the third foul on Chris Payton. Jones misses both free throws. He's a 75% free throw shooter, and Curtis Jones has been off tonight. Averages 16 per game tonight. He's got just two. Let's see. To me, that looks pretty good. And I know I get the benefit of super slow motion, but man, he has been an animal disrupting and, and tossing shots all night. And Buffalo. Three straight misses from the free throw line. You can't do that against Penn State. I know that you were a big guy back in the day. Kind of. You had a lot of blocks. You were a stretch four. Well, you I didn't leave the floor. I was, uh, you know, I was grounded like like Southwest were, flights a couple weeks ago. You were a stretch four before stretch fours were cool. Yep. But as a guard, Noah, I saw a lot of forearm. I saw a lot of forearm. Oh, wow, okay. We want that call. I learned my partner soft. Okay. <laughs> Kent State by a dozen. Carey navigating. Finds Santiago. That one is short. And Hartnett able to rip it away from Hornby. <laughs> Buffalo searching for something offensive. Just 26% tonight from the field, and that's their 11th miscue. Yeah, just another, another play where they're out of sync with Bill Hartnett. Is thinking roll. Zid Powell is thinking pop, and they throw the ball right out of bounds. Jacobs against Zid Powell. Takes a baseline, throws up a wild shot. And Hartnett able to capture the miss. Foster crosses, and he draws a foul on the floor. It'll be on Gio Santiago. Yeah, I'm a little surprised that LaQuil Hardnett is, he's grabbing the basketball twice in front of defense three, but he's taking his time outletting it. Earlier in the first half when they had some success, that outlet was immediate. So I think if they want to push the pace, they got to get that ball out faster on defensive rebounds. Foster spinning into the lane, got it! Plus one, Armani Foster, who was Mr. Perfect on Tuesday. He didn't miss a single shot. He had a career-high 20 points at Ball State. Yeah, just bully ball down low. Armani Foster turns the drive into a post move and one. But he started his career at D2 Indiana University of Pennsylvania, where he scored 1,500 plus points. He's a big time scorer. But the best part of his game, as you highlighted, might be his passing. He's had three straight games with seven plus assists. Santiago lost the handle, got bailed out by a whistle. It'll be a foul on Buffalo. Their second team foul. 
That's going to be on Curtis Jones. That is his third foul. We noted in the first half he took four charges. That's his third for the Bulls. Carry around the screen. Jacobs, fall away, wide left. And Hardnett claims it. Hardnett dominating the defensive rebounds in the second half. And I thought Sincere Carey just, just went a little too far. He had the whole side cleared out. Jones, corner three, another miss. Curtis Jones is 0 for 6 from the field. His coldest game of the season. Hartnett against Santiago. Jacobs muscles it up. Hartnett, that's his eighth rebound of the night. Five in a row, right? Oh. Nice pass. Hartnett had it stripped. Foster lost it, trying to save it. Powell launches a three. It's off the mark. Frenetic. And Jones finally gets one to drop. That's his first field goal of the night. He started 0 for 6. Now, as, as pinball-y as that possession was, that, that's Buffalo basketball. It's get it on the glass, attack the offensive rebounds, and then and then find each other when, when the defense isn't set. They're, they're so good offensive rebounding. That, that looks like Buffalo Bulls basketball to me. Turnover Kent State. Buffalo's organized chaos is what they thrive off of. They've trimmed it to eight. Now they get 11 offensive rebounds a game. That's fourth in the MAC. But right here, falling out of bounds, a missed shot from the perimeter. And then a great, this is a great play always to tip the ball out if you're on offense. And then excellent bounce pass inside. So, you know, not, not something that Jim Whitesell drew up, but successful nonetheless. Bulls are not going away. Foster rising fire. Bumps against the rim, and there's Hornbeak to claim it for Kent State. Jacobs halfway down the lane. Oh, collision and a blocking foul called on Buffalo's Jones. That's number four on Curtis Jones. That is a huge foul for Buffalo. Still out there trying to take it. I thought that one was a charge too. Oh man. Sends us to a timeout. Kent State leads by eight here at home. Buffalo's leading scorer on the season, Curtis Jones, at 15.9 per night. Took four charges in the first half, but Noah, now he has four personal fouls. Well, he should have got five charges. I thought that when Von Cameron Davis came across the middle, look at him just chuck him out of the way with his right hand. He's in legal guarding position. You're allowed to move. So how do you commit a block and you end up sliding 17 feet on your backside? I think that one was a tough one, but it didn't matter that he had three fouls. He still went for that charge. And, and try to continue playing at a high level in the defensive end. An important teaching moment on the Buffalo bench. Getting a lecture from head coach Jim Whitesell. How will they manage his playing time the rest of the way? We'll find out. Carey, step back. Barely clips the rim. Kent State has missed 13 of their last 14 threes. And yeah, we goes gotta, back to Buffalo. We got to close the door or something. I mean, the shooting has been bad and it, it's been very bad for Buffalo but Kent State not that much better and you know you, you got to credit both teams are playing incredibly hard they're both good defensively and it's league play and the Mac is a very physical tough league but there's also just been a lot of missed shots both these teams shooting well below their season averages Buffalo wants to run and gun but it's been a half court game on both ends Foster lost it and a Kent State steal. Their fourth of the game. They average almost 10 per night, top 10 in the country. Carry against Hartnett. He's got a big on him. Takes him to the hole, flips it up, and gets the bounce. And it's so tough. Just bouncing off bodies, hitting layups at all angles. Sincere carry. Impossible to stop. Powell tries to get downhill. Had it bothered by Hornby. K 
Kent State back to a double-digit lead. Quick hands by Powell. And he's got some fever. Oh, threads it ahead. Missed dunk from Parker. And Solinger able to rip it down. He feeds the big Hornbeek, and he's fouled at the rim. And Ron Hornbeek has been basically running rim to rim for five possessions and camping out trying to get the basketball. He, he finally got the ball, but was able to get fouled. And he, he dissuaded the shot on the other end. Fouls on Armani Foster, and that's his third foul. Starting to mount for Buffalo and still a ton of time left. Warren Beach's free throw is pure. He's just 58% for the season from the line. Hey, we've got a top 20 women's basketball matchup for you Sunday afternoon on ESPN. Olivia Miles in seventh ranked Notre Dame take on Diamond Johnson in 20th ranked NC State. Coverage from Reynolds Coliseum begins at 3 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Warren Beach splits the pair right around the season average. But that Buffalo possession the last time down, Blocker had a, had a dunk, and you can't throw it down, just lay it in. You really need that. And a foul called on the Golden Flashes underneath. That's going to be on Hornbeat. And it'll put Janivia Smith at the line. Well, Janivia Smith thought he got crushed, didn't get the whistle. They finally got the right call late. And I wasn't sure at first if it was Janivia Smith who grabbed the rim or if Hornby got a piece of it. It's tough to tell. Buffalo didn't miss a free throw in the first half. They were 9 for 9. With that make, they're still just 2 for 6 to start this second half. And they're still hanging tough because Kent State's shooting just hasn't been at their normal level. So if they can cut it down to 8 points, 7 points, Going into the under 12, they, they got to feel pretty good about where they are. Second free throw, sputters off. Now we knew how good Kent State was defensively coming in, second in the league in scoring defense, but how impressive has Buffalo been on this end? Well, they've been good, but sometimes just missing shots uh, by the other team. You know, sometimes you look good, but it's just the other team's offense. Carey was walled up and a deflection. Buffalo will have it on offense, but Buffalo defensively. And Kent State's 37% shooting. They're 3 for 17 from 3. Just an off night, or does Buffalo deserve a lot of credit? I think it's a, it's a little bit of both. Powell from the corner. Way off the mark. Buffalo now 4 for 21 from 3, below 20%. Okay, I think it's the shooting. <laughs> <laughs> Davis 3, no. I mean, these guys can't buy a basket. But this is the league play. You gotta, you gotta be able to win ugly when you're in the league. There's more familiarity. There's a lot more tape out there. The scout is better. The stakes are higher. Adams finally hits one. Yes, sir. He's been good. That's long. his third three of the night. He is three of Buffalo's five. Yeah, long 6'6". Six, six. Really versatile and can really stroke it. Carey. Draws a foul. Seven point lead for Kent State. Coming into this one, Jalen Sullinger was a big storyline for the Golden Flashes. The sophomore from Columbus, Ohio, best pure shooter on the team, was averaging 15 points per game in the last three, but hasn't done much tonight. Carry from the foul line. Swirls it in. He's so tough. I, you know, once he gets below that free throw line, he's got every shot in the book. And another one that he made look easy. He's in double figures for the 19th time this season. And his 50th time over the course of his Kent State career. Remember, he started his playing days at Duquesne in the A-10. He was all Mac first team and all Mac defense last year. Gives you just under five assists a game in addition to the 17 points. He's just one heck of a player. Eight to shoot. 
Adams trying to split the defense, and Soldier takes it away. Good idea to put on the brakes. He didn't have the numbers. He's only played eight minutes tonight. Carey. And they call a foul on Buffalo. Hand check is called on Armani Foster. And that's a big foul. That is his fourth personal foul. So now the starting backcourt of Curtis Jones and Armani Foster each saddled with four fouls with still over 12 minutes left. Yeah, that's, that's enormous. And, and now guys got to step up. There he is. Soldier able to rip the cords from the coffin corner. His second three of the night and just nine minutes of action. Yeah, he's super efficient. He's had three games where he's been three for four from, from behind the arc. So he makes the most out of his limited shot attempts. Hop step from Blocker. Powell trying to sell the call. Blocker rises up and drills it. Just a 33% three-point shooter on the year. Blocker nails it from the wing. He shot it in rhythm. He wasn't wide open, but got his feet set and shot it with confidence. Buffalo's hanging around. They're hanging tough. Really nothing going their way, and they're only down nine. Solinger pull up from the foul line. Off the mark. One handed all a cart rebound from Smith. Buffalo with a three could get it to a single uh, two possession game. Sloppy pass and a steal for Jacobs. Three ball way off the mark from Carey. Offensive rebound. Back door. Jacobs denied by Smith. All tangled up. And a whistle and a jump ball. I mean, that's been this game. Wide open shot and physical and tough inside. But Jalen Sellinger getting involved for the Golden Flashes. Come off the pick. Nothing but net. And then on the other end, blocker bottoms. Alongside Noah Savage, I'm James Wesley. It's a nine-point lead for Kent State. 16 and four coming in, six and one in league, but they just suffered their first MAC loss of the season on Tuesday at Northern Illinois. They allowed a season-high 86 points. Meanwhile, Buffalo, they're coming off their best win of the year. They won at Ball State 91 to 65. What's been the story in this one? Well, Buffalo not taking care of the basketball. They got 14 turnovers. They're shooting just 29% from the field. Kent State's winning the game. They're shooting 37% from the field, and they're only four for 20 from downtown. Buffalo six for 22. So it's just been a tough grinded out game. Soldier from the corner. He is so deadly for the Golden Flashes. Well, they got to get him more, more attempts because he's 48% from behind the arc, but he doesn't lead the team in makes. Myron Thomas does in his 48 makes. And Coming into the game, Jalen Sillinger only had 29, so they would start really designing offense around getting him shots. Hasn't missed a three tonight. He's three for three. Hartnett. Shot clock winding down, has to put it up. Kept alive, and Peyton able to snatch it away from Kent State. The points off turnovers tonight, a big storyline coming in. Top two teams in the MAC and turnovers forced per game. It's 13 to 2. Kent State. Sullinger, that would have been a perfect four for four. Not that time. But I like that shot for him. Yeah, it's, a, it's a shot that you get to take when you shoot at 48%. Partnett underneath. Shot clock at 10. A hot step and a trip. That'll be a foul on Thomas. But Jalen Sullinger, you know, they can do this in the half court, not just off the out of bounds under, but, you know, set him a little screen, knocks it down, and then on the other side, you just can't be that late trailing Jalen Sullinger. So left side, right side, doesn't matter. Another but net for Jalen Sullinger. But then just do that in the half court too. Get him more shots. 
He's got nine points in 11 minutes. And a goal 10. That basket will count for Zid Powell. It's a 10 point lead for Kent State with 9.24 remaining. Buffalo in some serious foul trouble in their backcourt. Curtis Jones has four, their leading scorer at 16 a game, had 27 points on Tuesday. And then Armani Foster, who's coming off a 20-point, seven-assist performance also on Tuesday. He has four fouls. Jacobs, baseline. Quick hands by Powell to tap it away out of bounds. Curtis Jones has re-entered the lineup number three in black. Four points tonight on the one for seven shooting. Yeah, and he, play, he plays pretty much every minute available, 31 minutes a game when he's not in foul trouble. So you're asking other guys to step up, like Control Blocker only plays 17 minutes a game. So Coach Whitesell really rolling the dice here and trusting his best player. Jacobs, tough pass. Thomas roars in, offensive foul. Wipe off the basket. Buffalo will have it. Yeah, Myron Thomas transferred in lead from Ball State. That's a, that's a tough one. Another charge, but here we go. Down the lane. Man. <laughs> that's a tough one. That was a pretty good drive. And the leader screen called on Buffalo out high. We go right back the other way to this State. That's going to be called on Isaac Jack, his second foul. Do you wear makeup for the games, or? Yeah. You, did you make up? On my face? Like a makeup? No. no. Makeup call? No. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. I didn't catch it the first time. <laughs> Had to do a double take. <laughs> well, they're just that good looking. <laughs> Thomas misses a three, and that dunk won't count. And that is the third foul on Jack. Yeah, it's his, it's his birthday, and he's had a little bit of a rough go. Just can't seem to stay on the court. A lot of a lot of tweets when he's been in the area. And he's, he started as a hockey player. He's only played four years of organized basketball. He's from Canada, and he prepped just across the border from downtown Buffalo in Canada. Did a prep year there, but he's got a, a huge upside and, and great size. So happy birthday to him. But he, he would like to, I think, start this game over. And a foul called on Kent State over the back. It's a hackathon here in Kent, Ohio, the last several possessions up and down. Yeah, the flow, the flow has just been spectacular the last two minutes. NASCAR tempo. <laughs> but you know what? It, from my perspective as a player, if there's 100 fouls in the game, there's 100 fouls in the game. Don't, yeah. don't stop calling the fouls, because there's, and that's not how officials are supposed to operate. You're supposed to call a game as it's, as it's written in the rule book, so expect a long parade to the free throw line. Adams can't hit the front end. Carey trots it up. Carey flips Whoa. it up, and he scores it. How tough is that? That looked like Steve Nash right there under the arm of the defender. Walker oh. has it blocked by Peyton. Who else? That's his fifth of the night. Here comes Sillinger downhill all the way in. An easy one for Sillinger. He's in double figures with 11. Timeout, Buffalo. So how great has Chris Payton Jr. been tonight? Spectacular. Kent State trying to hold on here at home. With Noah Savage, I'm James Westling. Fatheads, are those still a thing? Uh, I think so. There's Zach Galifianakis and Grumpy Kent, Cat. Kent State's been able to build a 14-point lead, their largest of the night. How have they been able to do it? Well, a gorgeous layup inside by Sincere Carey. And a huge part of it has been that guy, Chris Payton. Career night in blocks with five. And he's sneaking up on career highs in terms of points and rebounds. And right there, Jalen Sellinger. All the way to the cup, but that's that's too easy in terms of it could be defense. As we look at Coach Rob Sender off, and the job he's done here has been fantastic. Look at the balance scoring for Kent State. 
Coach Sindroff has guided the Flashes to six postseason appearances in his 12 years. Kick out to Adams, bottled up by Davis. Shot clock down to 10. Powell sails in, takes the contact and the bucket. That was tough. Bouncing off bodies and switched hands in midair. Buffalo still within striking distance, but time becoming an issue. Certainly an ally for the flashes. The long oh, and all oh, the book is missed by Peyton. The roof was coming off the Max Center if that goes down. Yeah, perfect pass. Powell tees for a three. And Peyton's there to snatch the rebound. His seventh of the night, his career high is eight. Well, Kent State's going to use some clock the rest of the way. Perry loves this mid-range spot. Turn around, high. Oh, he He's up to 15. And it's not often you see a 6-1 guy go down in the box or someone bigger on them and then get whatever they want. Hartnett, blocking foul called underneath on Davis. Both teams over the limit. Hartnett going to the line. Right here, Carey takes it down low. How about this sweet fade? That'll be an orange crush with Tennessee and Texas, a top 10 showdown. And yeah, no doubt, and uh, along with your boys in the Big 12, there's so much great talent in both those conferences, but I really like TCU out of the Big 12. You know, it's a big wins. Their only losses were West Virginia, Iowa State, Texas. And then they had a really bad loss, Northwestern State. Hey, Mike Miles didn't play in that game. And then Eddie Lampkin's going to be a big question down the stretch. Hurt that foot. He did play last game, but limited. And, you know, he, he's been so great for them. He lost a ton of weight. He focused on his body. Uh, but th those two conferences, like, don't, ex don't be surprised if, if the Elite Eight is looking really heavy SEC and Big 12 this year. I could see it. Kansas and cut Kentucky feels like they play just about every year or every other year But it's always right down to the wire Yeah, and Grady Dick has been better than advertised for Kansas. He's been just phenomenal soldier has been phenomenal here the lefty miss Buffalo only two points in transition tonight Staying pulled on the break and Sollinger able to clear it for Kent State and they gotta, they gotta start converting on some of those because they're gonna run out of time. Carey Burrows, and he flips it home. So tough, stop and go. A little hesitation is all it takes, and he just gets you off balance and attacks that foot that, that you're pushing off of. Oh, that was a sensational one-on-one -on -one move in tight quarters. Hartnett, Adams from the top of corner. Jones, short, Powell, Adams all alone, was able to lay it in. Only one Buffalo player in double figures tonight. It's Isaiah Adams. He has 16. And they're getting open looks. You know, and at the last media, they were six for 22 from behind the arc. But when you don't, when you don't make shots, it is tough to keep your energy level high in the defensive end. And this guy, Sincere Carey's made four of his last five. Taking over for the Golden Flash is the reigning MAC Player of the Year. Gave it up to Jacobs. Right back to him. There's that pinball and a foul called on a bowl on the inside. Yeah, just a fortunate bounce for Kent State and Malik Jacobs. He tried to thread that in between and, and just bounce right back into his hands. Fouls on Zin Powell, and that's his fourth foul. So on the floor, Buffalo, when you look at their offensive lineup and who starts for them, they're one, they're two, and they're three. Their point and their two wings all have four fouls with five and change left. That's Jones, Foster, and now Powell. We got a little blood on Malik Jacobs here. Gonna take care of that. What do you like about this Kent State team? Up by 13, could they be a threat come March? 
Yeah, no doubt. And, you know, they have really well-defined roles, and obviously it starts with Sincere Carey. He's got the ball so much for them, and yeah. they, they trust him to make so many decisions. But the complementary piece is really, really fit well. And, you know, whether you're talking about Santiago, who can really shoot the basketball, or Jalen Sollinger, you know, guys who can really uh, spread the floor. And if Chris Payton is going to play at this high level in the middle, they're going to be really scary. Along with the guy at the free throw line, their, their most versatile player, Malik Jacobs. Jacobs hasn't done much offensively tonight, just four points. But he has nine rebounds, four assists, and three steals. He's a well-rounded player. Selected to the MAC All-Defensive Team a season ago. Also holds the Kent State single-game record. Had ten steals back on November 19th against Chicago State. Ten steals in a game. That's incredible. He, he affects the, the game. He scores, gives it 20 points, or he can affect the game scoring six points. Jones cutting. Still can't find the bottom of the well. Follow, no, and there's Hartman to take out the trash. He's been great on the on the rebounds in terms of defensively in that time, able to hang around and be the beneficiary. Jacobs flashes to the top, pulls the trigger, and switches it home. Just his second make of the night. Gives Kent State a 14 point lead. Kent State's led wire to wire. Kent State leads by 14. They're the loudest here in the land of Kent, Ohio, with Noah Savage on James Westling in the 10th SEC Big 12 Challenge. It's tomorrow. We'll have five of the games here on ESPN. 15th ranked Auburn and West Virginia tip off the day. Starts at noon Eastern, then it's number two Alabama and Oklahoma at two. Arkansas and Baylor at four. Top 10 matchup with Texas and Tennessee at six. And then we'll cap off the night with number nine Kansas taking on Kentucky at eight. It's all tomorrow on ESPN and the ESPN app. And Auburn, you know, certainly lost a lot, but Wendell Green Jr. back. And they may have found another guy, Johnny Broom, had 27 against South Carolina and then seven blocks against Texas A&M. You remember the team last year, it seemed like they blocked everything. Walker Kessler, of course, went on to the NBA, but they're always incredibly exciting, incredibly uh, volatile as well. Jones still can't find his stroke. We mentioned earlier that Kent State has the second longest home winning streak in the nation. Trailing only UCLA. Tip in there from Hartnett. But coming into well, about a month ago, Auburn and Kansas were both in front of them, but each of those teams have suffered a loss at home. Solinger, he's had the hot hand. Not that time. Off the heel. Buffalo off and running. Powell up and under, and he finishes on the break. Yeah, great hang time. We're another Juco transfer guy helped Harkham Junior College to a 32 and 2 record and all the way to the NG, NJCAA championship. That is Buffalo's first fast break points of the entire game. They came into this one second in the nation, only trailing TCU. Yeah, when you talk about keys to the game, as Sincere carries in the score, Penn State talked about transition a ton today and shoot around. And Buffalo usually gives 18 transition points. And that only at two is incredible. That's a great job by Kent State. Wow. Buffalo at the line for two. That's the third foul on Carey. Yeah, and Coach Senderoff telling us so much about what a great defender Sincere Carey is. And, and I feel like I've, I've called a lot of block call charges from my position up here, but. That one looked pretty good to me, and you know the amount of the, the physical shape and fitness that Sincere Carey needs to have because he has the ball a lot on the offensive end. He dribbles around a lot. That takes a lot of energy, and then still got to play incredibly hard on the defensive end. So the first thing is his competitiveness and his willingness to be in great shape. That's where it all starts, and he just he doesn't get tired. He's got a great motor. 
And he also never comes off the floor. I mean, the dude is never on the bench. Are you going to take him off the floor? <laughs> no. <laughs> if you had him, no chance. Buffalo will apply some full court pressure. Sullivan races ahead. Carey, so patient. What a veteran play. Could have pulled the trigger on an open three instead. Checks the clock, and he'll kill some of the timer. And there's so many mature basketball players across the country, just like Sincere Carey, due to the COVID extra year. Reach in foul called on Adams. He doesn't like it. But because of that, you got two issues with the COVID extra year and with the transfer portal. College basketball is incredibly deep from top to bottom. Yep. But the second issue is how do you get everybody playing time and keep everybody happy if you're a coach? Because you haven't you have too much stuff to you know fit in the bag. You got too many groceries in there. How much of an advantage do these veteran teams with 23 and 24 year old players have here in the next month or so? A huge advantage. I mean, being a 24-year-old or 23-year-old compared to an 18-year-old is incredible um, in terms of just your fitness level and your maturity, but also the guys like Chris Payton that, that started off at a higher level at Pitt, transfer down. You know, he can get playing time for Pitt. And look at him here. He's a star. A 24-year-old playing an 18-year-old. It's like an 18-year-old playing a 12-year-old. I mean, when you look at it that way, it's a huge gap. Trailing three from Adams, too strong. 12-point lead for the Golden Flashes, trying to make it 17 straight here at the Mac Center. They're 70 and 15 at home over the last five seasons. Jacob, and he's fouled underneath by Hartnett, who comes up limping underneath. Let's go, let's go, let's go. He's so huge for Buffalo, so you don't want to. You don't want to see him hurt if you're a Buffalo fan. He looks like he's going to stay in the game. He's okay. And how about Malik Jacobs? You know, after starting one for eight, sticking with it, impacting the game in multiple ways. And, you know, I've been there. I'm a player. Okay. ESPN 2, we play at Wait for us. I hit my first three. I go, I'm going to go off on national you're TV. Oh, yeah. I missed my next 11. One for 12. <laughs> But you God. kept shooting. You kept shooting. That's what. And that, that was pre-text messages. But I got some some calls from my friends going, <laughs> "Dear Lord, man, let's let's hope if you're a Buffalo fan that Laquill Hardnett is is okay because he he's just such a huge part of their team, especially as we saw 